Hi everyone, my name is Michelle Ronson, and this presentation contains an extremely condensed overview of my user research class called PLAN. This topic is super important because I can actually gauge how successful my studies are going to be by the level of stakeholder engagement I have during the user research planning process. The more engaged they are, the more likely we are to move from insights into action, and it all starts with a collaborative plan. So how to write an iterative research plan and why it's so critical? That's what I'm here to talk to you about today. A little bit about me. I'm a recovering designer. I spent my first 20 years working um, for uh, great design firms and in-house building my own design teams. Uh, about 10 years ago, I founded my own consulting firm um, called Ronson Consulting, and that incorporated user research. About Three, six months ago, I rebranded after 10 years under the name Curiosity Tank for the sole purpose of dedicating more time to helping what I call aspiring, temporary, and accidental researchers learn how to conduct better user research, helping people just like you learn how to improve their research skills. I am the founder of Ask Like a Pro, which is a series to help people just like you um, put these learnings into action. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. I bring it up because it's important context for what we are going to talk about today. Um, if you know anything about me, you probably know uh, that I do what I love and I love what I do. I'm super excited to share um, things that I have learned along the way. I've crawled through and worked with some of the most UX mature and beloved brands in the world. And I am so lucky. I feel like I won the career jackpot. I really do. Um, my students know you can ask me anything. There is nothing, you know, too personal or nothing, you know, out of bounds. I didn't have a lot of people to ask uh, along the way, certainly user research and innovation and product development. Uh, the whole world was much different 10 years ago when I was starting out. So um, please really ask me anything. Uh, the series I created is called Ask Like a Pro. Um, and as I mentioned, this presentation contains an excerpt of the first class called Plan. And it's important that you have that context in mind for the rest of this presentation. So let's just jump in. Many people think a research plan is a waste of time. Many people think that it's a static document and or something that a researcher authors for his or herself. And I'm here to tell you that it's not, and it shouldn't be any of those things. A plan for product or service design is anything but. A plan for product service design should actually lay the foundation it should lay the foundation and it will lay the foundation for successful research when done properly. My number one indicator of a study success is stakeholder engagement in the planning process. The goal is to craft a plan to help uncover how the product or service or the experience that we're working on can be improved to the greatest benefit, provide the greatest benefit for the organization. They can also be focused on generating a better understanding of how people think and feel about the topic, etc. So how do we do this effectively? Before we're able to identify the people problems hindering um, who we are designing for or the services or the product's inability to achieve or ability to achieve success, we have to identify our goals. We have to get on the same page with what our goals are and where those goal posts are. And we have to do that together. In order to do that, we create a plan. So establishing useful research questions and identifying the ways to address them, it should be a team effort. My suggestion to you is to start to think about your role in the ecosystem, in the collaborative stakeholder ecosystem. In fact, I have two end users at minimum, two groups of stakeholders. I have the end users that my teams are designing for. Those are the people that will consume the products or use the products or services. And I also have another group of end users and those are my stakeholders. Those are the people who are going to implement on the research learnings. So it's helpful to think about your stakeholders as the target audience as well. That's right. We usually think of designing for a target audience, the end users, but I also consider the consumers of the research and the people who will act on it, another audience. 
Think about your targets broadly. And if you can get into this mindset and habit of thinking about your stakeholders and additional segment of users, you're going to be so much better prepared to move through this process and build that success from the get go. Think about them in terms of wandering cats, right? Think about them in terms of corralling them. And part of your role as a researcher is to instill this collaboration very early on and to maintain it throughout the process. So that's me in the center or you, the researcher, and that's all the wild, feral cats around us. And these are the people that are most interested in learning about this research. These are the people that will be applying those learnings. These are the people that will take our learnings and do something about them. These are the people that are most invested in understanding whatever topic we're exploring. So that's us in the middle, right? And everyone else is the stakeholder. Now, granted, you might not have more than one or two stakeholders. Your stakeholders might not appear on this list. Maybe it's a CEO or maybe it's an attorney or maybe it's someone else. But just start to get into the mindset of thinking about yourself in the center of this ecosystem and your stakeholders being a part of it as an additional target audience. They have a different perspective. They have a different background. Your product manager thinks very differently than a writer, than a marketer, than a designer, and so forth. And you want to harness all of these beautiful perspectives to create a more solid plan and to build that collaboration at the onset. So before writing anything in a plan, we want to herd our cats together, herd our feral stakeholders, and answer two very critical questions. And we want to do this together. We want to do this collaboratively. We want to answer why we're doing this research, right? We want to get on the same page. Now, people might have different reasons for why they're doing it or different benefits that they might take out of it, but we want to agree upon the umbrella description of why we are doing this. And those descriptions must tie back to your company's organizational goals, or key metrics, whether you call them OKRs or KPIs or other success indicators, they've got to tie back. Your why has to tie back to your corporate or your organizational goals, your overall company metric, mission, something along those lines. If your research doesn't tie back to these things, as fascinating as it may be, it won't have buy-in. And there's nothing worse than working on a research project that doesn't have stakeholder buy-in. Why? Because it's going to be a waste of time. It's going to sit there and nobody's going to act on it. Okay, so we want to ask ourselves and we want to ask our key collaborators, what mood, what needle is this moving? Okay. And this often means balancing both business needs and goals with actual user needs. The second thing we want to talk about as a group and come on the same page about is how will the results or the learnings be acted upon? In other words, what will happen when we complete this study? How will we use the outcomes of this study in our product, in our service, or to further our experience or understanding of what we just learned? The research needs to start with the people it will inform. And we need to agree before we even start the plan or as part of the planning process, what we're going to do as a result. Because if we're not going to act on it in any way and we can't agree upon how we're going to act on it, we shouldn't be doing the research. It's not going to go anywhere. While we consider why and how two of the most primary questions, we also take into really big consideration where we are in the process and um, the types of information that would be most useful to explore at this time. Now, design and user research is iterative, right? So while we might have a hundred questions, our plans are gonna be focused, more focused on iterative learnings, okay? What do we need to know and when do we need to know it by? And we're gonna work in short, focused, um, iterative sprints, if you will. We're gonna model the actual product development process, right? So we need to work together to agree on why and how, and we need to tie our research goals 
and objectives into our KPIs or OKRs or other success metrics or other acronyms that your company or organization may use. Again, the goal is to craft a research plan to uncover how we might improve the product, service, or the experience for the greatest benefit of the organization and ultimately to improve the experience of the people that we are designing for. When we make research goals everyone's goals, everyone is more bought in and we're working towards the same goalposts. Now, User research truly, really is a team sport, and I so mean it, and it starts with the plan. Inclusion is going to equal buy-in. Ultimately, it boils down to inclusion. If we want buy-in, we need to include our stakeholders at every single step, and the most important step is when we're making that plan. We're going to include them because the more bought in and the more engaged they are in the overall process, the more likely they will uh, deliver, the more likely they will act upon the learnings. And that's the ultimate goal is not just to learn for learning's sake, it's to move from insights into action. And people won't buck work that they're a part of, okay? So if people see their work in it, they'll be more likely to believe. They'll be more likely to engage. No one can say you didn't ask the right people the right questions in the right way if they participated, okay? This is my biggest predictor of success in a study. It is stakeholder engagement in the planning process. If it's their work, they won't regret it. So let's include them from the onset. Here's my approach, and this is what's worked for me over the years, and this is how I've honed my process over time. I always include my stakeholders when gathering the initial feedback, prioritizing the key questions, and authoring the plan. That inclusion is going to generate the interest, the buy-in, and the investment in the outcome, and I know that's a critical success factor to moving from insights into action. I'm also going to include them throughout the process while the studies are actually taking place. I'm going to ask them to observe. I'm going to include them in note taking if possible. I'm going to record everything. If they can't participate live, I'm going to invite them to review sessions at their leisure. The closer they are to the actual data input and the closer they are to the people that we're soliciting feedback from, the more closely they're going to understand, they're going to engage, and they will buy in. Okay, the inclusion equals buy-in. It will also help build the credibility for the research that's being done and provoke questions and help the information marinate in real time, right? It's going to improve their understanding when it comes to sharing the analysis and even participating in the analysis and synthesis. If they're included in the process, if they're watching in real time, if you're providing snippets of your learnings along the way, the dots are going to start to connect much sooner, okay? I'm also going to include them while I'm um, the studies are actually being conducted when I might share like little snippets of information or progress. So we agreed upon this or now we're at this phase and we've recruited so and so people. The pilot is scheduled here. Right. And then I also am going to share little snippets of information as the sessions are taking place. You know, we just wrapped up P1. Here is a key takeaway. Okay, so also, you know, during the process, and then when we've completed our sessions, we're going to continue to engage them. We'll continue to invite them um, at different points in the process and to workshop with us. And then also at the end, oftentimes um, research reports or learnings or whatever the final deliverables are, are organized according to research goal. And while this may be very helpful in some instances, it might also be helpful to organize your learnings in terms of functional area. I have found that this is also really helpful in order to move more quickly from insights um, into action. So that's not to say that I'm going to replace um, answering the goals, but I want to tell a story with those findings, and I want to make sure that I'm telling that story in a way that's going to move us forward faster. So I want to set the expectations, okay? Your research process is something people have to feel that they're invited to participate in. You don't want to create a huge, really mm, ugly, like 
um, not inviting um, plan, right? Nobody wants to be part of that. Nobody wants to be part of like a complicated document. And I certainly don't recommend anybody anywhere spend more than two hours drafting the plan in the first place and don't draft it in the vacuum. Okay. What I do is I start to educate my team on how I like to work and what I have found has worked best in the, in, in the past. And, and that's by setting the expectations that the plan is iterative, nothing about user research, our competition, ourselves, our product, or the people that we're studying or working with to learn more about is static. And our research plan will not be static either. Our plan is going to change and we should, you know, get into the mindset and expect that it's going to change as we make progress and it's going to change the more we learn and it's going to get updated dozens of times. It is and should be a living, breathing document. So to set the foundation, I want to make sure that there is a shared understanding of what a research plan is. It is an organized living document containing high level details. What those high level details are may fluctuate depending upon who's authoring the plan, what type of plan it is, the cultural, um, the culture in which the plan is going to be executed in, um, and also um, the level of UX maturity in the organization. Excuse me, but everyone, all of the key stakeholders on the team should be using the plan. They should be contributing to the plan. They should know when there's been major updates and it's used to clarify the approach, the intent, and certainly the scope. Now, remember I said we're working iteratively in these plans and we want focused topics. So again, everyone that is invested, the key stakeholders should be using and referring to the plan. Now, what is culturally relevant? That's going to be different depending upon the culture in which you're working in. Now, you might, might work for a very UX mature organization, but your key stakeholders are not, right? Or maybe your primary stakeholder has never gone through this process before. Your plan should acquiesce with its depth, its detail, according to what's going to be culturally relevant in your organization. And here are some of the other ways that your plans may deviate, right? And your and, and the dependencies. In nine years, I've never written a plan that is exactly identical to another plan. It always, I try always to make it culturally relevant. So who's authoring it? What level of experience do they have? What type of plan is it? Um, what, where are the feedback or the questions along the way? And these are all things um, that we want to take into consideration when we are authoring the plan. And there are some things that we definitely want to include, no matter how culturally this or that the organization is. We want to include the high level goals, right? Why are we doing this research and how will the learnings be applied? Remember, those were the first two questions that we wanted to address with our stakeholders. Okay. We also want to include our key questions and we also want to include what we already know. We want to establish what the background is or the context and a great place to start with that are with hypotheses or assumptions. And we can gather those from secondary research. We can gather those from our existing analytics. We can gather them from a variety of means. We rarely start from scratch. Okay. And in the plan class, we talk about how to gather our assumptions and hypotheses. And we also talk about how equally important it is that we don't treat these as facts. They are starting points. In the plan, we will also achieve um, the steps we will take or the approach, if you will, to achieve our goals. We're going to talk about participant recruiting, where to find the best people to provide us with this information, how many people we'll need to solicit, how many people we'll need to recruit, and how many people we'll need to schedule. Because it all works like a big funnel, right? If we want to, if we're conducting a usability test and our goal is to talk with five participants, we're going to have to solicit many, many more than five people. We're going to have to then recruit many, many more than five people, and we're going to schedule more than five people. So it all works down in a funnel when we work very strategically. 
Um, some plans really drill down on the methods. Um, we definitely want to have some sort of timeline because we want to provide the, the information just in time for our teams. And um, again, we're going to work iteratively. And we're also going to take into consideration the format that the deliverables will be provided in or the format of the outcome. If my plan or my project includes video snippets or highlight reels, that I need to accommodate for that in my timeline. Right. I also need to accommodate for that in my budget and I want to accommodate for that in the skill set of the team in the roles and responsibility. So I'm going to think through these primary what I call these primary plan inclusions and make sure that we're all on the same page. So why and when is a plan used? It's used throughout the duration of the study. It's used before to organize, discuss, and document. It's used during to make sure that we're actually gathering the feedback that we set out to and to manage expectations and scope creep. And after the study, to inform the learnings gleaned from the research and make sure that they, they answer the original questions we set out. Equally as important, we use it after the study and we make sure it's updated as a final document of what actually took place and what we learn. The plan is your spinal cord. It is the central component of your research efforts and it is the most critical. And this engagement and this iterative progress is key to that success. Your plan is intended to be agile and iterative, just like our approach to product design itself. We practice what we preach. I do not recommend spending more than two hours on the first draft gathering initial feedback. I intentionally don't spend too much time on it because I want to make the plan itself a team effort because I know that inclusivity equals buy-in. And that first draft is intended to set the foundation for the collaboration and teamwork that I know is really, really required to succeed or if not required, will significantly increase the chances of uh, this study being successful. So here's a quick recap. We want the plan or the plan sets the foundation of a successful project. If you don't have a few hours to develop a plan, you probably shouldn't be investing a few hours to run a study. Developing a plan in concert with the people who care about the outcomes the most will ensure buy-in. It will ensure the goals are directly related to the key business metrics and make sure that user research in this study is everyone's goal. The plan is going to capture and share the team's collective knowledge about the topic, right? And that's going to mitigate rework. Again, how, the, how a developer thinks about the topic and how the designer think about a topic are very different how a product manager thinks about the topic and how someone in um, the support team thinks about the topic are very different. And we want to harness all of those beautiful minds. We want to learn from them and we want to get on the same page. We're also going to agree again on why the study will be conducted and what those key questions are. So that purpose, right? And also who's best suited to provide the right feedback. All of these things are setting you up for success down the road. We're also going to get on the same page to understand what outside materials and assets might be needed. Do we need an NDA? Do we need some sort of prototype? Do we need um, some other sort of stimuli or activity, right? Maybe we're doing a card story as a part of an interview. Well, we need the cards. We need the topics for the cards and things like that. And we're also going to agree on the timeline, the budget, and the final format, okay? The plan will help us agree on the overall course of action and when the learnings will be delivered. Make the plan itself a team effort. Don't spend more than two hours on the first draft before gathering feedback. Let the plan set the foundation for teamwork and collaboration. That is my winning and number one goal when I am starting a new um, project and when I am teaching teams and individuals how to upskill and increase their own user research knowledge, 
I do this with my individual classes. I um, offer this teaching in my corporate trainings. Make the plan itself a collaborative and team effort, and you will by far set yourself up for, for more success as the study continues. And with that, I thank you. I'm super passionate about this um, topic and user research and design research in general. Um, please link me in. Mention that you met me in this class. Um, I'd love to connect with you. I often write about the questions that people ask. Um, so I hope that you will stay in touch. Um, if you're looking to broaden your experience in research or your know-how, um, you might want to consider signing up for my newsletter called Fuel Your Curiosity. It's a monthly-ish newsletter, if you will, that's primarily about user research, and I'd love to have you. Um, and if you're interested in learning anything more about the plan class, um, please um, take a look at curiositytank.com workshops. Um, you can see the plan class details there as well as all of the other classes. These are hands-on, um, do it, roll up your sleeve classes where you, they're super small, five to seven people, and you actually leave the class with a plan. You leave the class with a plan to gather feedback on, to execute, to include in your portfolio, and so forth. And I've also included um, a link to the plan template that I actually use and I um, teach to in the resources document. So please take a look there. Thank you again. I look forward to answering your questions.